Hello, everybody. Andrea here with Dental L Tutoring. So what do you need to know for the exam for oral pathology? So for dental assisting students for oral pathology, that's basically sciences. And that is only 7 to 12 percent of your exam. And dental sciences include for your exam, it's going to be think anatomy, think head and neck anatomy. It's going to be oral pathology. It's going to be tooth development and eruption. It's going to be microbiology and also pharmacology. So this is in your blueprint, seven to 12%. I'm not saying that seven to 12% isn't a lot, but it's not a lot either. So if you don't study these things, that's not good. You're going to get them wrong, of course, for the board exam, but that could be a difference between a pass or a fail, seven to 12%. So, but oral pathology is combined with pharmacology, tooth eruption, anatomy, all of those topics that I had just mentioned. So stay tuned, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to share my screen right now. I wanna tell you guys specifically what you have to know for dental assisting students for the board exam. If you need more help, I do teach a board exam prep academy for dental assisting students where tutoring, all of that is online, mock exams, case studies, so much more than what I'm going to talk about today. So definitely have a look at that if you're interested. But let's jump right into it. So oral pathology. So you do not have to know this entire thing. For oral pathology, for dental assisting students specifically, all you have to know is basically what's normal and what's not normal for the more common soft tissue lesions. Um, oral cancer screening, as an example, you just have to know as a whole that that should be done on every single patient and you need to check lymph nodes. That's important. Basically anything um, inside the mouth and outside the head and neck area. That's consistent of an oral cancer screening. But that is going to be more for dentists and dental hygienists. So you don't have to know too much further into it, but you do have to know what the oral cancer screening is. And then as another example, I'm just picking a few slides here. Do you know what this is? So this is black hairy tongue. Hairy tongue is something that the dental assistant needs to know for the board exam. And you need to know what causes it and how it happened. So basically elongated filiform papilla is what makes the tongue have that hairy appearance, if that makes sense. It doesn't have to always be black. It could be brown. I've even seen orange kind of. It's dependent on what that patient is eating. But the thing is, why is that elongated filiform papilla happening and what's causing the color change on the tongue? If the client's a heavy smoker, for example, the tongue would probably look like this, black, opposed to orange from eating too many Cheetos or something. But you can't just like scrape this off. This has to be, the cause has to be eliminated, such as smoking. Cleaning the tongue, having better oral hygiene can really help with that but you can't just simply clean it off. So this specifically is what you have to know for the board exam. You have to know how to identify normal versus abnormal. So let me go through a couple more. So another example, do you know what this is just by looking at it? These are both the same thing. One of them is more prominent and more obvious. It could look like many things, but is this normal or is this not normal? Let me go over the slide with you. So this is something that is extremely common and that is called um, geographic tongue. Do you guys remember learning that in school? It could also be called arrhythmia migrans or benign migratory glossitis. You have to know all three of those for the board exam. They might ask you in a case study, what is benign migratory glossitis? And you'd be like, what? I don't remember that but then you would get the question wrong. So you need to know all three terms. This is absolutely normal, depending on the patient, you might see it on that patient this time, but then six months later, it magically isn't there. Would you be concerned? No, your patient might be because they might not have noticed it on their tongue before. A lot of people don't look at their tongue. On the other you know, side of things, they might come into you saying, I need to see the dentist right away. I have this weird lesion on the tongue. The dentist asks you to kind of go in there first for the emergency exam. You look at it and you don't want to go back to the dentist and say, oh my God, their tongue looks horrible. I think it's cancer. You know, you need to know what's normal and what isn't. So even as bad as this one looks, I think that looks pretty bad. It's normal, geographic tongue. It kind of looks like maps on the tongue. And as it says here, it's multiple red patches surrounded by a thickened, irregular white border, but not always. As you guys can see, 
it doesn't always have this white border. It could, it could look more smooth like this, but there's white patches. So something you have to know. Do you guys want to go over one more? So this is in your oral pathology chapter of your textbook, but I bet I can make it a lot more exciting for you to study for, right? And that's what I try to do. So let's go over another one. How about this one? Do you guys see these like dots on the palette? Okay, so on the board exam, they might show you an image such as this one and you're going to need to know, is that normal or is it not normal? So this is nicotine stomatitis. This I feel is very distinctive, um, opposed to some of the other lesions that might look like something else. As soon as you see these red dots on the palette, you know right away that's nicotine stomatitis. The key things to know is that Basically, it's from smoking. So nicotine, you know, nicotine, we know what that is. So it's caused the heat from smoking is what's causing that on the palate. It is inflamed salivor, uh, salivary duct orifice, orifices. So that's what it is. So you need to know what causes something. You need to know what gets rid of it, you know, like how to treat it. Is it normal or is it not normal? So you would not want to be looking at this on your patient and being like, oh, I think they have cancer. You know, I have to talk to my boss. We have to refer them. Oh my goodness. It's really good to know the differences between normal and not normal. So you guys, if you need any more help studying oral pathology, this is a big slide. It's 106 slides. So imagine, but I hope I made that a little more exciting for you. If you need more help, let me know. I will leave the links for you down below. I do have a dental assisting monthly board exam prep option. So you study per month and only pay per month. Or if you want everything all at once, all the mock exams, case studies all at once, and you have several months before the board exam, then I suggest the board exam prep academy. So I will leave the links for you guys down below. Check them out. If you have any comments, questions, let me know anytime because I am here to help. All tutoring is online. I'm going to help you guys pass the board exam. That is what I do. I currently hold a 99.7 success rate helping students pass. So I know I can help you and enrollment is now open. So do not wait. Thank you guys. And I will talk to everybody very soon.